I wonder how about grizzly meat? Do you think that's good for you? You had grizzly meat. I did. Can it was it was definitely tasty. I mean, so that kind of brings us to the omega three world. Because, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I would be interested. There's a big to study see. In, that you just did, right? Or know about? Well, yeah. I'm. Um, I've so there's lots of omega three research going on. I'm now an an associate research associate at the Fatty Acid Research Institute, which mm. is it's a nonprofit, but they do a lot of fatty acid research mostly omega-3. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah, I'm involved in um, a couple of studies there, but the the founder of that, Bill, Dr. Bill Harris, he's amazing. I've, I've had him on the podcast. He's really, he's been doing omega, I mean, he was like one of the pioneers in this, this research field. And he's developed something called the omega-3 index test, hmm. which is a more accurate long-term marker of omega-3. So it, you measure omega-3 in red blood cells, which stay around for about 121 days. Hmm. So it's like a long-term marker versus measuring it in your plasma phospholipids, which mm. is like, what did you have for dinner a couple of days ago? Was <laughs> right. there fish in it? Okay. Read that. So okay. it's one of those things where it's like a little more reliable. Mm -hmm. Again, back to the tools that we're using to measure things, all that stuff matters, yeah, right? right? So um, the omega-3 index, he's been, I mean, he's just published one phenomenal study after another using the omega-3 index and on large, large cohorts of people and has found that a higher omega-3 index, so this would be like 8%, mm -hmm. which is not what's in the U.S. So the average omega-3 index in the U.S. is like less than 5%. Hmm. 5% of, um, you know, the fatty acids being omega-3. Is it in this, is this the same as just fish oil? Like you yes. remember back yeah. in the so day. So omega-3, yes. So, yep. so eating fish or taking, supplementing with fish oil, which mm -hmm. is, you, know, you can get a lot of omega-3s from doing that. Right. Um, versus the, you know, both are good, mm -hmm. you know, because that also there's other nutrients in fish as well and there's protein. Um, but yes, it is. So um, people, so we can get to that, which is like, how do you go from a 4% right. omega-3 index to an 8%? Mm -hmm. Well, those studies have been done and it takes about on average two grams of omega-3 a day supplementation to go from 4% to 8%. Mm -hmm. Now that's two grams less than what's being prescribed by doctors. Physicians prescribe omega pharmaceutical omega-3. It's called either Vesipa or Leveza and they mm -hmm. prescribe it for high triglycerides. So my mom takes it. Like high blood pressure? Um, I don't know if it's prescribed for high blood pressure, but it's definitely for high triglyceri triglycerides. And what's what's that? Just in um, layman's terms, tri like high tri triglycerides. Yeah, yeah. So that's when you're. That's like you know the it's it's a glycerol backbone with three fatty acids. So that's how we store fat. Mm. And when that's like circulating in your body, it's it's bad. Okay. Like it's a cardiovascular disease risk factor. Oh, I see. Okay. Like blood pressure is. By that's, the way, we yeah. should talk about that. I have a story. Okay. Um, <laughs> But anyways, the, the thing that's amazing with the omega-3 index is that people that have the 8% mm -hmm. omega-3 index are have a five-year increased life expectancy compared to people that have 4%. Wow. Five, five years. Five year. Think about five years of being around your loved ones, doing amazing things, enjoying life. Five years? Five years. And there's studies showing that they're like, you're much less likely to get Alzheimer's disease if you have a high omega-3 index. So the quality of life is better as well. Um, mm. And I was telling you this yesterday, and I like talking about it because it blows my mind every time. Yeah. The smoke, so they, they took this cohort of people and there were smokers in there. Mm -hmm. There were smokers and there's non-smokers. And, um, and they looked at their omega-3 index and they found that the smokers that had a high omega-3 index of 8%, so these are smokers that are like, I need the fish oil, I gotta do, I'm smoking. You yeah. know? These, <laughs> they had the same life expectancy as the non-smokers with the low omega-3 index. That is insane. You could be somebody who's running every day but not getting enough fish oil, and then somebody who's you know smoking a pack of Marlboros and taking fish oil, and you're gonna live the same amount, roughly? I mean, of course, there's probably other <laughs> things that play as well, but, but I yeah, think- But yeah, I mean, the theoretically, The yes. omega-3s are so important. I think that they are hugely important for the brain, for inflammation, and then for muscle, and this was like a big mm -hmm. thing too, because um, it's a really sort of growing field. There's a few people doing this research. One of them's talked to Chris McGlory. I think I told you about him. Yeah. Um, and he's he's kind of a, jun a junior researcher. Um, so he's kind of just started his lab. He trained with Stu Phillips. 
Um, I had him on the podcast like, uh, you know, like a month ago or so, and he was blowing my mind with some of his data. Now, look, there's, there's got to be more, you know, larger studies done. This stuff has to be replicated. Other people have replicated his work as well. But mm -hmm. like, you know, there's, you always need more evidence with that caveat. Um, Omega-3s are protecting against disuse atrophy. Hmm. So, so, you know, I mean, there's, he's now done a few studies, him and others, where high dose omega-3, so that we're talking four to five grams a day. I wonder, like, what's a pill when you take, get a supplement and you take a pill? How much is that? It depends on the supplement. So a good one, you're going to get like 500 milligrams mm -hmm. of, you know, let's say, 350 of its DHA and then 150 of its, you know, um, EPA, mm -hmm. which are the two marine forms. Mm. ALA is the plant form really not. Doesn't do as no. much. We're yeah. talking about the, the marine forms. Right. Um, so I like, there's a really good um, fish oil brand called, it's, it's Metagenics and they make something called Omagenics and it's mm. a, it's a liquid. Oh. And you do like one teaspoon of that and that already gets you like above two grams. Hmm. So doing like two teaspoons, like one in the morning, one in the evening, I mean, then is you're that getting that, that eight percentage you're talking about, or is that above that even? Oh, if you do, if you do, if you are doing more like four grams, that would be above that. Okay. But um, yeah. yeah, two grams would get you. So why, like I personally do take like experimentally high doses of omega-3, but not so much higher than, again, people are being prescribed yeah, four be grams. Careful, be, you know? Cause with me, I'm like, if a little's good, a lot's better on everything. So be careful when you say, <laughs> well, that's the I'll one thing. Whole bottle the, at one yeah, time. The, what's the one thing <laughs> though, that I like, you know, it's, I, I, I can't find evidence that too much omega-3 is really, now I guess some people, um, it might, it might, um, affect arrhythmia, mm -hmm. but it decreases stroke risk. Hmm. So in people with cardiovascular risk factors, there's like some little sort of growing evidence. We don't quite understand it. More needs to be done that they, you know, they're getting, um, some people do get arrhythmia, but again, the stroke risk is lowered from mm -hmm. omega-3 and that's like undeniable. So that's the whole problem hmm. with arrhythmia is it increases stroke risk. So mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of like, well, you know, yeah. um, it's one of those things we don't understand, right? Understand. but it should be understand. investigated more. Yeah. 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 And like, yeah, I got that. Researchers part. don't understand. I yeah. mean, it's not that I don't understand. It's that <laughs> science hasn't figured it out yet. Right. Oh, I, mean, I right. guess that that's what I should say. Yeah. Um, so with the omega-3 and the disuse atrophy, it's so, it's really interesting because you were asking about like, you know, you were talking about like, incre like increasing the amino acids in, in the muscle, mm -hmm. like transport or something. And um, the omega-3s are, are sensitizing muscle to amino acids. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're, they're taking amino acids and make, making a smaller protein dose seem bigger to mm -hmm. muscles, which... Does it seem like this could be... I mean, it seems so powerful. Is this like the one... If you're going to do one thing, should this be yes. it? Yes. It seems crazy yes. how powerful yes, this is. It is. Yeah. It, it, this is why I joined that research institute as a, I, I, because I believe in it so much. I think it is, I think omega three has the pharmacological profile, like it has the pharmacological um, potential, like to act like drugs, mm -hmm. but it's the safety profile of a nutrient. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So it's like I, I think you know people are so interested in aging drugs and metformin and. This, this omega-3 stuff, yeah. I don't know, five-year increased life expectancy, it's preventing muscle disuse atrophy and it's sensitizing. Now that might not matter so much for the, your, your bros you were talking about that are yeah. taking in 300 <laughs> yeah. grams. They're, they're like, they're getting their protein, but it might matter when they're injured, right. they're getting a surgery mm -hmm. and they can't lift. Yeah, train. They can't train. 